Welcome to my office. This is Nancy from Desert Haven talking to you today about the importance of good attendance on the job. Poor attendance is the number one reason people get fired in this country. It's not for doing a bad job. It's not for being inappropriate or misbehaving but for simply not showing up to work. So it's very, very important part of having a job in the community is showing up for your job every day. Today we're gonna to learn six tips how to maintain perfect attendance at your job. The number one step for maintaining perfect attendance is to make your job the priority in your life. It's the number one thing. It's more important than going to Magic Mountain. It's more important than hanging out with your friends. It's more important than holidays. It's more important than anything. You have to make it a, a very high priority in your life. Businesses schedule you to be there at the job on certain days and certain times for a reason. If it's a busy time or they need you there and that's why they schedule you to be there, right? So it's very important that you work your schedule as it's written so that you're doing a service to your employer who's giving you a job by showing up for all of your scheduled shifts. Step number two is, what is it? keeping track of your schedule. Now, some places you may have a set schedule and that's awesome if you have one, but a lot of companies you do not. Your schedule could be different every day, your schedule could be different every week. You might work days, nights, have Wednesdays off or Fridays off or you may not get your days off two in a row. It's important that you work your schedule. Keep track of your schedule. Some places will change your schedule and maybe not let you know. Most places will let you know if they've changed your schedule, but some do not. So it's important that you check your schedule every time you work, every time you go in, check your schedule again to make sure there's been no changes. And before you go to bed, if you have your schedule on your phone, which a lot of places do now, you can check your schedule before you go to bed so that you know what time to get up the next morning. We interrupt this program to let you know that you can get days off work. You can request those days off by submitting a request to your supervisor a couple weeks before the day off. So if you have a doctor's appointment, you submit a request. If you want to do something fun with your friends, you submit a request. If you have a family reunion or a wedding to go to, you submit a request for those things. It's not impossible to get days off that you need off. You just have to plan ahead. We now return to your regular programming. Speaking of the morning, alarm clocks. Don't have a job without one. Don't rely on other people or your dogs to get you up in the morning. Make sure you're using an alarm clock or two alarm clocks if you have to, to make sure that you're getting up on time with plenty of time to relax a little bit, wake up, get yourself ready, looking good for work and getting there on time. If you um, go to bed early enough, you should try to get at least eight hours of sleep a night so that you're rested and ready for your work day. Transportation is no excuse to be absent. Lack of transportation is not the business's fault. It is your responsibility to get to work and get to work on time all of your scheduled shifts. So do not rely on your friends and family to get you to work. Rely on public transportation or drive yourself. If you use Access or Dial-A-Ride, you want to learn how to schedule those rides yourself so that you can be in control of getting to work on time. You, it's your job and it's your responsibility to get to work on time. Don't leave that responsibility on somebody else. Do whatever you can in your life so that you're not ever calling out from work on the same day, right? Like you wake up in the morning and you just don't feel like going to work. Mm -mm. Don't do it. 
go and work your shift, there's it's a huge inconvenience for the employer when you call out at the last minute. There's nobody there to take your place. They have to call people in on their day off. Um, the employer isn't going to like that very much. Your coworkers aren't going to like that very much because now they're having to do your work also. Or someone's having to come in on their day off to do the job that you were supposed to be doing. Um, of course, there are true emergencies. I understand that. Everybody has one like, you know, once a year or something, but they don't have those emergencies very often. And you really want to save those call outs like that for a true emergency, you know, you know, emergencies. Uh, when you are super sick, going to the doctor and the hospital, vomiting, diarrhea, all that nasty stuff, call out as soon as you possibly can to give your employer as much notice as you can. If you know the night before, call them the night before. I'm super sick. Um, super sick. Not just, I don't feel good, but, you know, dub sick, sick. You know the difference. Call them as soon as you can so that you are giving your employer lots of time to try to replace you. If you're working with job coaches, whether or not they are there, make sure that you call your job coach to let them know that you have called out or changed your schedule or switched with someone. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's important to remember that when you take a job, you're making a promise to that employer that you're going to be reliable. And showing up for all of your shifts shows that you're going to be that reliable employee.